Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today, I'm excited to share with you my tips and strategies for passing the Social Studies Praxis 5004. I've been on term break for the last few months studying to pass the Praxis 2 series, and I have completed the reading, math, and now the Social Studies. <laughs> I will link these videos down below for you if you're interested to see the reading and math portions. I want to thank you to my subscribers for being a part, and if you haven't already, please subscribe. Praxis 5004 is the third section of the Praxis 2 exam if you're taking it all at once. However, it is best to take them individually rather than all at once um, because this can help you to really hone in, your, hone in on your skills and pass much better. There are 60 questions and you do have 60 minutes to complete this exam. There are selected response questions, but rest assured it's really all multiple choice. The categories for this um, exam is U.S. history, geography, and world history. This exam is heavy um, with a lot of information. The key to really passing this exam is to really use the strategies that I provide, which I'll get to in a second. Practice, 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 and tons of reviewing. I'm going to let you in a little secret for this exam. It's perfectly fine to just know a general overview of the concepts. You really don't have to know every little single detail. But for every kind of major event, I highly recommend that you know the key causes and effects of the event, the location, the major players, and any important battles or dates. So the concepts that you really need to know um, have to do with social studies concepts, as I've mentioned. And basically, that's it. There's nothing about how to teach any of these at all. Um, it's just really testing you to know your wealth on U.S. history, world history, and geography. Um, but I will tell you, um, the Praxis 504 will test your ability on knowing European exploration and colonization, the 13 colonies, the American Revolution, the Constitution, the presidents of the U.S., the westward expansion, before and after the Civil War, the Industrial Revolution, World War I, World War II, the Cold War, the Civil Rights Movement, social and political conflicts in U.S. history, major court cases and their significance, the 27 Amendments, civics and forms of government, key documents and speeches. And that's basically for all of U.S. history. Then you kind of move into geography, which talks about agriculture and energy, um, a little bit about culture and society. And then we kind of move into world history. And in world history, they really want you to know all about ancient civilizations, starting from the Neolithic um, agricultural revolution, 20th century developments, the age of reason and the enlightenment, decolonization around the world, and economics, which is something that I didn't really expect to see in a social studies exam, but it is definitely going to be on the exam. I did have a couple of economics questions. So basic concepts of economics, you don't have to go too far in depth with it. Um, economics is not really my strong suit, but I did manage to pass it. So I highly recommend, again, just the basic concepts of economics and just lots of review. I have more strategies for, to help you to pass for the exam than my previous videos because this content exam is very heavy dense. As always, use the graphic organizers and mind maps to take notes and review. Use flashcards to review concepts. Watch videos, documentaries, historical movies. Teach to an empty room. Take a practice test daily and review areas you need to strengthen on. Apply it to your classroom. The strategies that I highly recommend that are very specific to this exam are going to be that you study different types of maps, 
their uses, and also maps with key cities. You need to know the different continents of the world. <laughs> Um, you need to know different placements of different countries. This will help you when they ask you for geography questions, whether it's location of a specific city or the where a specific mountain range is. And you kind of know um, major lakes in a key area. Look at a bunch of maps. Anything that you've kind of missed from questions, review those concepts. Um, I reviewed it by practicing and watching lots of videos. And I do have a video playlist that I will link below if you are interested. I highly recommend that you watch this. Um, it's really going to give you an in-depth overview of what you can expect for this exam. And when you're taking the exam, skip hard questions that you don't know, but make sure you mark them. That is key to help you remember. After you answer the easy questions first, go back to the harder ones. And then if you have any time left, kind of go over all the questions that you've answered before you submit. Once you kind of submit towards the end of this exam time, it's going to ask you if you would like to report your scores twice. Make sure that you report your scores to the current university that you are attending. So if you're a WGU student, make sure WGU is on there. And also make sure you report your scores to your state's education agency. Again, because this test is very heavy, don't get overwhelmed with knowing every little single detail of a particular concept. A general overview is perfectly fine. And don't stress if you miss a couple questions or more. I managed to pass with a score of 183. And I probably missed about at least 10 questions um, to receive that score. Remember, the goal overall is just to pass. You just want a passing score. So make sure you find the score applicable to your state. Celebrate yourself after you take it, whether you've um, passed or not. Still celebrate yourself because it is an accomplishment for taking this exam, um, for being heavy dense that it is. <laughs> But don't take the exam until you're absolutely sure you're ready to take it. And I highly recommend that you don't wing this either. So you will get your unofficial score on the same day um, because it is a selected response multiple choice exam. You won't get your official score until at least a couple of days to a week. I do have a link that will give you the exact day and time that you can find your official score down below. Um, this is a newer resource that ETS Praxis has been offering, and I absolutely love it. Uh, no more guessing games when trying to figure out when your score is going to come out. As I said, I will post the free video playlist that you can use down below. Again, it's going to give you a more in-depth view as to what you can kind of expect um, to know beforehand with all the concepts. Um, the concepts that I kind of told you in this video, that was a very general overview. In the video playlist, it goes into more depth with specific concepts you need to know, like the rain shadow effects, climate change, um, the suffrage movement, all that sorts of things. It's just very in-depth with all that. I also will post below a template to really help you plan for the exam and some free practice tests that can be very beneficial to you. As always, I do recommend that you use some sort of study buddy like Kathleen Jasper's test prep, study.com, or Tutoring240. I will post their information down below. Thank you so much, guys, for watching. I hope this helps you as you begin to prepare and get ready to pass the Social Studies Praxis 25004 exam. You got this. I believe in you guys. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. I'll be happy to get to you. See you all again soon. Bye, everyone.